Hi, and welcome to Top Farmers Know How. I'm Amanda. Mastitis is one of the most common diseases of New Zealand dairy cattle. Even top farmers have a few cases of mastitis each year. In this video, we'll talk about best practice treatment for mastitis, including how to give intramammary antibiotics. Remember that mastitis is either clinical, when the cow has an abnormal quarter or milk, or subclinical, when the cow isn't showing any signs, but she has a high somatic cell count. For clinical mastitis, don't milk the cow into the vat. Instead, follow Mrs. T. Mark, record, separate, then treat. First, mark the cow, following the convention on your farm, for example, with red spray paint. Then, record the date, the cow's tag number, and the quarter with mastitis in your permanent animal health records. You may want to also record it temporarily on the whiteboard in the shed so it's easy to see. Next, separate. Either draft the cow into the paddock with the red mob, or put her in a side pen or leave her on the platform until she can join the red mob, so that her milk will be diverted away from supply. If you'd like to take a milk sample for bacterial culture, do that before you milk the cow. Watch our video, Finding Mastitis in the Milking Shed, to learn how to take a milk sample which can be cultured. Then, after she's joined the red mob and the milk line's been diverted, milk the cow. Once she's been milked, she can be treated. Have a plan sussed with your vet before calving begins about which clinical mastitis treatments to use and when. They may recommend delaying antibiotic treatment for most cases of mastitis until you get milk culture results back, since antibiotics aren't always necessary. Or they may recommend treating all clinical cases straight away. When antibiotics are needed, then in general, it's better to use an intramammary antibiotic, which you put into the quarter, than to use an injectable one. But an injectable antibiotic may be necessary if the cow is very sick, has multiple quarter mastitis, staph aureus mastitis, or if she's a heifer with small teats. Some types of intramammary antibiotics are more appropriate as first-line treatments, and others are more appropriate as backup treatments. So make sure everyone treating cows on your farm is clear about what to use in different situations. It can be helpful to develop a decision-making flowchart with your vet and to hang it on the wall next to the medicine cupboard for easy reference. No matter which antibiotic you use to treat clinical cases, how you give it will influence how well it works. It's really important to follow the product label exactly, unless you have written instructions from your vet telling you otherwise. For example, if the label says to milk and treat cows twice a day, then milking and treating them once a day could reduce cure rates or alter the necessary withholding period. Stopping treatment or switching products before the entire course is complete may also reduce cure rates and could select for antibiotic resistant bacteria on your farm. Once you have a cow ready to be treated with an intramammary antibiotic and you know which one to use, what's the best way to administer it? Well, they need to be put into the udder as cleanly and gently as possible so you don't make the cow's mastitis worse. First, clean and dry your gloves. Next, use a teat wipe or cotton ball soaked in meths to thoroughly clean the teat end. Then uncap the tube and partially insert its tip into the teat end no more than a few millimeters. Some products have a dual tip cap to make this easier. Gently press the plunger to instill the product into the teat. If the product label says to strip or massage it up into the quarter, then hold off the end of the teat with your clean fingers and use the forefinger and thumb of your other hand to move the product up. Lastly, spray the cow's teats with teat spray. If you're also treating the cow with an anti-inflammatory to help her feel better faster, give that after you've given the intramammary antibiotic. Make sure you have, in writing from your vet, how to alter withholding periods if you use an antibiotic and an anti-inflammatory at the same time. Record the treatments you've just given next to the cow's information in your permanent animal health records, and if appropriate, also on the whiteboard. Make sure it's clear how many more doses of each treatment the cow should receive and when. Double check that the correct milk and meat withholding periods are being followed. Once you're finished with that cow, clean and dry your gloves before moving on to the next cow. A few days later, when the cow is due to be finished with her course of mastitis treatments, she may still have an abnormal quarter or milk. Sometimes this is because the antibiotic hasn't cured the infection. But more often, the antibiotic has killed the bacteria, but the inflammation is still resolving. 
consider continuing to check this cow for a few days rather than extending your antibiotic treatment or switching to another antibiotic. Ring your vet if you think your mastitis treatments aren't working as well as they should be. It'll be easiest to investigate if you have good permanent records for all clinical cases. Once the cow's milk and quarter are back to normal and she's cleared her milk withhold, mark her to signal she's okay to go back into the vat. For example, spraying over her red paint with green and then return her to the milking mob. So far, we've covered how to treat clinical mastitis, but what about subclinicals? If you know a cow has a high cell count but isn't showing signs of mastitis, ring your vet to discuss how to treat her since it's often not worthwhile to use the same treatments you would use for a clinical case. Your vet might recommend that you put a cow with subclinical mastitis into the red mob for several days to see if she self-cures, or that you stop milking the affected quarter, cull the cow, or dry her off early with dry cow antibiotics. Dry cow antibiotics are designed to work over a long period of time, specifically to treat ongoing subclinical infections. Hopefully you found this video to be a helpful best practice guide for treating mastitis on your farm. Check out the rest of our Top Farmers Mastitis series to learn more.